glancing at and looking at and considering your appearance. Think of all the times you look in a mirror, all the times you've seen pictures of yourself. What do you look like? How well do you know what you look like? Someone were to put a piece of paper in front of you and ask you to, to draw a picture of yourself, how accurate would that picture be? Now maybe you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, I don't have a whole lot of artistic talent that's going to impact the way that my drawing would look. Imagine for a moment, though, that you were a great artist, that, that your artistic skills wouldn't hold you back in any way. How accurate of a picture could you draw of yourself, just from memory? I think most of us, if, if we had to draw pictures of ourselves, we'd want one of these close at hand, right? That way we can look at it, check how we look, make sure we've got the details down, and then put it down on paper. This morning, the Holy Spirit, through the Bible writer James, he invites you and me to, to think about, to consider, what do you look like? And as he does that, he, he brings a mirror for you to look into and to consider your appearance. He wants you to look into this mirror. He wants you to, to think about what you see in this mirror, to intently stare at it, and to remember what you see in that mirror. Holy Spirit, as you look at that mirror he, he brings, he wants you to consider the question, have you deceived yourself? Have you deceived yourself about the way you look spiritually? This mirror that I brought with me it lets you look at your outward appearance. You look into this mirror and you can, you can see some things about yourself. If you look in this mirror, you can see the basics of how you look. You can see your hair color, your eye color. You can see the shape of your face and the size of your ears or your nose. If you look into a mirror like this one, you can see if there are any problems with your appearance that you need to deal with. Do you have a case of bedhead? Is there a, a pimple that needs to be addressed? Do you have something in your teeth that you need to fix? If you look into a mirror like this, not only at the basics of your appearance, you not only see if there's any problems, but if you look really close, if you look really intent in a mirror like this, you can see a lot of the details about your appearance. You can see the, the start of some of those wrinkles. You can see that, that first gray hair or that hundredth gray hair that pops up into your head. You can see what you look like when you look carefully and intently into a mirror like this one. Now the mirror that the Holy Spirit holds up before you and me this morning as he invites us to, to consider the way we look isn't a mirror like this. It's not a mirror for looking at your outward physical appearance. No, it's a, it's a different kind of mirror that the Holy Spirit puts before you and me. And yet, thinking about a mirror like this helps us to think about the point the Holy Spirit is making when he writes through James, Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. The mirror that the Holy Spirit holds before you and me this morning to, to consider our appearance in is that mirror that he calls the law of liberty, the perfect law of liberty. Now, when you hear that word law, you probably think of rules, right? That's what the word law is to deal with, the rules. And, and since we're in church, and we're thinking about stuff connected to God, maybe when you hear that word law, you think about those rules, the Ten Commandments that God gave to people as a, a set of directions for, for the kind of behavior he wants in this life. And yet that law only really brings slavery, doesn't it? The law that, that the Holy Spirit speaks about through James is a law of liberty, a law that gives freedom. There's only one law that does that. It's, it's the law that the Lord Jesus talked about when he said to his followers, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth of that word that Jesus came to speak, that if you hold on to it, will set you free, 
is the message, the truth, that he is the savior of the world. He is the one God sent to rescue people from their sins by his death and his resurrection. In fact, when Jesus was asked, what's the work that God wants people to do in order to have heaven? Jesus' response was to say, the work of God is this, to believe in the one that he has sent. Think about that. The work that saves people isn't really much of a work at all. It's not a work. It's just relying on what Christ has done by his death and his resurrection. That faith in Christ Jesus as the Savior, and that alone saves people from sin and death. In fact, that's the only way that people are saved from sin and death. It's just, it's a certainty, it's a reality, it's a law, kind of like the laws of science. That's just the way that, that things work. Think about the laws of thermodynamics or the laws of motion. That's just the way that, that those things operate. And so too, this law of freedom is just the way that, that salvation comes about. In fact, the Apostle Paul in one of his letters calls that message of the gospel the law of faith. It's just the way that people have to be saved. Faith in Jesus alone. So that message of salvation by faith in Jesus, that's the mirror that God holds up for you and I to look into this morning. And if you look into that mirror of the perfect law of liberty, you can see some of the basics about the way you look. You can see some of the basics of, of what has been done for you in Christ Jesus. You see the color of that, that crimson blood that has washed away all of your sins and left you whiter than snow. In that mirror, you see the shape of the cross on which the Savior died to pay for your faults and your failures and the empty tomb that assures you of eternal life. If you look in that mirror, you see your baptism staring straight back at you. The baptism that says you are a child of God, you are connected to if you look into that, that mirror of the perfect law that gives, that gives liberty, you can get a sense of some of the problems that Christ Jesus had to save you from. As you see that perfect righteousness of Christ that was offered for your sins, you can't help but realize all of the failures that you've made in this life. All of the mistakes, all of the wrongs that you've hurt others with. You see how you haven't always spoken kindly. You see how you haven't always loved your neighbor as yourself. You see how you haven't loved the Lord with all your strength and all your soul and all your mind. But if you look into that mirror of the perfect law that gives liberty and you look carefully and intently, you see the details of what that Savior Jesus has done for you. You see all of those good works that he did in this life that, that have now taken the place of your faith. You see that, that perfect life Christ lived that, that covers your imperfect life. You see yourself the way that God sees you when you look in that law of liberty. You see yourself as a redeemed child of Christ, brought back from the power of sin and death and Satan. That law of liberty lets you see what you really are like because of Christ Jesus and through faith. Mirrors like this are kind of valuable, right? It's nice to know the way you look. Nice to be reminded of that, to see if there's anything wrong. Nice to, to see that. And so we look into mirrors like this often, right? Probably look into a mirror like this at least once a day. That perfect law of liberty, that mirror the Holy Spirit holds up for you and me, that too is a very precious mirror. It's one that you and I look into regularly, right? We're doing it right now, just like we do every Sunday. We look into that law of liberty. In fact, you probably do it more than just on Sundays, right? You read that Bible at home. You have devotions. You think about it and meditate it in your, on in your daily life. That law of liberty is one that you and I ought to look into on a regular basis. And as we do that, we have to think about what we see. And we have to carry what we see with us. Because if we look into that law of liberty, the Holy Spirit invites us to ask, have you deceived yourself? When you look
look into that law of liberty, that message of Christ and what he has done that shows who you are a sinner and who Christ is the Savior specifically for sinners. Do you remember that? When you look into that law of liberty, that message of the gospel that tells you the wrongs that you have done and the right that Christ has done to save you from those wrongs, do you carry that with you? Do you carry what you see in that law of liberty out into your life when you stop looking into that law? Do you remember what you see in that mirror of the law of liberty as you go in and live out your life, as you carry out the various vocations that God has given to you? And by that word vocation, I'm just talking about the, the callings, the tasks God has given to you as an individual in this life. Those callings might be, might be many in number. You might be a parent, a child, a husband, a wife, a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor, a teacher or a student, a boss or an employee, an office worker or somebody on an assembly line, a mechanic, an electrician, a doctor, a nurse, and so on. As you go about those callings, do you remember what you saw in that law of liberty. As you go about your callings in this life, all those various tasks, do you remember who you are because of Christ Jesus' death and resurrection? Do you remember that you are someone who has been bought, that you might live under Christ in his righteousness and be in his kingdom and serve him in blessedness, both now on earth and forever in heaven? is one that, that you and I ought to look into, so that we don't deceive ourselves. And at this point, I, I, I do want to pause and stress two things. First of all, when I talk here about being a doer of the word, and the Holy Spirit really talks about that, I want to be absolutely clear, I'm not saying that those good works you do in your vocations, those, those things that you do to serve your Savior, that doesn't save you. No, those, those deeds that you do when you look into the mirror of God's, God's law of liberty, they are the result of that faith that the Holy Spirit has created in your heart. Because remember that most, most important thing that's in, included in being a doer of the word is doing that work of trusting in Jesus, which is no work at all. It's a gift given by the Holy Spirit. And it's that faith in Christ Jesus, that risen Savior Jesus, that then produces all of those works in our vocations, in our daily callings. Second thing I want to stress is this. When I ask and invite you to consider, are you a hearer of the word or a doer of the word? Are you someone who has deceived yourself? I don't ask that question as an accusation. I don't ask it with the assumption that you are just simply hearers of the word and not doers of the word. I don't ask that question assuming that you have deceived yourselves. I ask it because the Holy Spirit invites you and also me to regularly stop and to consider our lives as Christians. Because in our Christian lives, there is a constant and an ongoing struggle, a continuous battle that we face to remember what we see in that law of liberty. To remember who we are in Christ Jesus. Because there is an enemy we have in this life. In fact, there are three enemies we have. We've got the devil, we've got the sinful world, and we've got that traitor inside of each one of us, our sinful flesh. And all three of them want you to walk away from that law of liberty that shows you your Savior, and to forget who you are in Christ Jesus. And so when I ask, have you deceived yourself? Are you a hearer or a doer? I'm not leveling that as an accusation. I'm issuing it as an invitation. An invitation to make sure that Satan doesn't let you forget who you are. Who you see in that mirror of the law of liberty, that gospel of Christ Jesus. What do you look like? Mirrors like this are helpful for that question, aren't they? And when you look into a mirror like this and you see what it is you look like outwardly, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference if you forget what you look like five minutes or even five seconds after you get done looking into that mirror. 
However, that perfect law of liberty that, that Christ gives to us, that's a little bit of a different mirror. It's a much more precious and valuable mirror because it's, because it's a mirror that helps us to see who we are in Christ Jesus. It's a mirror that we don't want to look in and then forget who we are. No, that's a mirror that we want to look in and we want to look at intently. And we want to look at often. And we want to remember who we are in Christ Jesus. Because then, by the working of the Holy Spirit, you will be a doer of that word. Amen. Please stand. Now the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Thank you.